Hi there, in this video we are going to discuss about the phagocytosis uh, and the clearance of the offending agent. So we will study how phagocytosis occur and how the offending agents are killed inside the uh, leukocytes. So you can say this is a, a leukocyte here and um, this is an offending agent or a microbe. So first step is recognition of this microbe by the leukocyte. So it happens by various receptors and these receptors can be mannose receptors, these receptors can be opsonian receptors and uh, these receptors uh, in addition to this, these receptors can be scavenger receptors. So uh, what are mannose receptors? Mannose receptors basically identify specific glycoproteins and glycolipids of the bacterial cell walls and uh, opsonian receptors identify specific opsonian proteins which opsonize uh, the bacteria which are produced in the complement system and scavenger receptor identify specific microbes as well as lipid particles. So these are the receptors here which recognize this uh, microbe and when it is recognized uh, this leukocyte put a pseudopod around this offending agent and then this pseudopod grows here and it fuses and forms a phagocytic vesicle inside the cell which contains this offending agent. Then this phagocytic uh, vesicle fuses with the lysosome, here comes lysosome and uh, they fuse and produce a phagolysosome which releases several enzymes and different uh, mechanism work here to kill the bacteria which we will study next. So uh, first step was the uh, recognition and engulfment and then it uh, fused with lysosome and then it is killed by various mechanisms. So uh, these leukocytes are never uh, are not always activated because uh, our body does not want to waste its energy. These are only activated when there is need to be activated and how they are activated? They are activated by different cytokines and different inflammatory mediators which tell these leukocytes that there is some uh, intrudement or there is uh, some injury or there, uh, there are some uh, external particles which need to be eliminated from the body. Uh, so you can uh, see here, uh, this is the uh, diagram here and uh, this is an offending agent which bound to here receptor then it was engulfed here and formed a phagosome. This phagosome fused with the lysosome and formed a phagolysosome then inside this phagolysosome there was the destruction of the offending agent. Uh, so next uh, we move uh, to see how these are killed inside the phagolysosome. So there are different mechanisms to kill the uh, offending injector bacteria inside the phagolysosome. What are these mechanisms here? Uh, the first thing is uh, there is generation of reactive oxygen species. These reactive oxygen species are responsible for damaging the membranes of the offending agents and their DNA and lipids and how they are produced. Basically the first uh, reactive oxygen species which is produced inside the leukocyte is superoxide or O2 and how it is generated? It is basically generated by enzyme NADPH oxidase. NADPH oxidase is present normally inside the cytoplasm or plasma membrane here but when there is phagolysosome it, its different components arrange on the membrane of phagolysosome and here they catalyze the reaction in which NADPH, NADPH and oxygen are used to generate superoxide negative. This superoxide is basically a reactive oxygen species which damages the bacteria and helps to kill them and it is spontaneously get converted into hydrogen peroxide H2O2. H2O2 has less activity to kill the bacteria and it is then uh, H2O2 is converted into H2O2 gets converted to hypochlorite or OCL2 negative. This hypochlorite OCL2 negative is extremely bactericidal and it helps to kill bacteria and this uh, hypochlorite formation occurs in the presence of myeloperoxidase myeloperoxidase so what happens here um, this reaction is going on in phagolysosome so what happens uh, there is my there are azeophilic granules inside the cell uh, especially we can say uh, specifically we can say neutrophils and these azeophilic granules release in the myeloperoxidase which catalyzes this reaction and leads to the formation of uh, this hypochlorite which uh, helps to kill the bacteria. So this H2O2 myeloperoxidase halide system is the most efficient bactericidal mechanism of the cell. Uh, but these reactive oxygen species can kill the host cell too. So host cell have different protective mechanism which involve different enzymes such as superoxide, dismutase, catalase and glutathione peroxidase. These enzymes 
neutralize these uh, uh, super oxides and prevent them from damaging the host cells. Another reactive oxygen species produced here is nitric oxide or NO. How it is produced? It is uh, it is produced in different tissues bodies uh, by a nitric oxide synthase enzyme. These nitric oxide synthase enzyme are categorized as endothelial nitric oxide synthase, neuronal nitric oxide synthase, and inducible nitric oxide synthase. Endothelial nitric oxide synthase uh, continuously produce small amount of nitric oxide in the endothelium, which helps uh, to control the blood flow. And neuronal uh, nitric oxide synthase produces it in neurons, which uh, act as a neurotransmitter and inducible nitric oxide synthase uh, produces nitric oxide when it is uh, required in inflammatory process or body's protective process against the pathogen. So it is produced basically uh, by inducible nitric oxide synthase when required from arginine. Arginine gets converted to citrulline in the presence of oxygen and NO is produced. And this NO uh, later on combines with superoxide to generate peroxynitrate and this peroxynitrate is a bactericidal agent which helps to kill the bacteria. So what happens? Inducible nitric oxide synthase synthesizes nitric oxide from arginine and oxygen and this nitric oxide combines with superoxide to generate peroxynitrate and this peroxynitrate is a bactericidal agent which helps to kill the bacteria. In addition to these uh, neutrophils uh, which are the uh, chief phagocytes in the acute inflammation have multiple other granules which contain different proteolytic enzymes uh, which help to clear uh, the bacterial infection. These proteolytic enzymes involve gelatinases, lactoferrin, plasminogen activators, histaminase, alkaline phosphatase and so on. And if uh, the activity of these enzymes and proteases go unchecked, they uh, cause significant damage to body tissues. So they are controlled basically in the body by different mechanisms which involve anti-proteases enzymes such as alpha-1 antitrypsin and other anti-proteases which keep their activity under check. Next mechanism of killing bacteria uh, uh, by neutrophil is the generation of NETs which are neutrophils extracellular traps. So what happens, supposedly uh, these are multiple neutrophils here and these neutrophils have nuclear material as well as different fibril network inside them as well as different granules. So what happens in the process of generation of NADs, these uh, neutrophils, uh, nuclear material of these neutrophils degenerate and they produce a meshwork of fibrillar meshwork in which uh, they concentrate the microbes and uh, prevent them from extending away and release their uh, cytotoxic, cytotoxic granules here which kill these microbes inside these NETs and this generation of NETs by neutrophils also called netosis as it is specifically to the, uh, related to the death of neutrophils in this process. And the nuclear material lost here uh, is basically detected as uh, nu uh, nuclear antigens in different autoimmune diseases. So these uh, leukocyte mediated uh, cell reactions also damage to the normal cell and this damage to the normal cell uh, is uh, as a result of extended inflammatory reaction when there is difficulty in removing the infection such as in tuberculosis and certain viral diseases it can be due to inappropriate body's inflammatory response such as in autoimmune disease in which uh, body starts damaging its own cell as it recognizes self antigen and it can be due to allergic reactions so uh, Leukocyte can also release their uh, cytosolic or, uh, content which are present in the granules into the extracellular matrix and this content in extracellular matrix also damages the uh, surrounding uh, healthy cells. So this is the drawback of inflammation that it is although a, a protective mechanism against the pathogen but it can lead to damage to the normal tissues. So uh, here is something uh, which uh, you just need to read because you will uh, study that uh, in the later uh, lectures in detail. So this leukocyte function is controlled by various subtypes of the leukocyte. Uh, here the, the subtype discusses a uh, th 17 cell which are helper T cells and a lays into leukocyte 17 which helps to recruit other leukocyte and so on. We will study here later on and the deficiency in the cell lead to, can lead to cold abscesses and skin abscesses and so on. So when uh, inflammatory process is required, it occurs and when uh, there is need to terminate the process, uh, there is a decrease in the level of inflammatory mediators. When inflammatory mediators decrease, there is decrease in the recruitment of uh, leukocyte and the activated leukocyte also die away. As a result, the inflammatory process uh, shut down. So moreover, uh, when the inflammation is going on, uh, different participants of inflammation such as macrophages also release different mediators which help to stop the inflammatory process. 
जो इन्फ्लेमेशन डज नॉट गो ऑन अनचेक इंस्टेड इट इज टाइटली रेगुलेटेड इट अकर्स वेन एवर इट इज नीडिड एंड वेन इट इज नो लॉन्गर नीडिड द प्रोसेस इज टर्मिनेटेड एट इट्स ऑन what we have studied in this lecture this lecture which i have studied basically phagocytosis when uh, phagocytosis occurs when uh, a particle comes it is exposed it is engulfed and fuses with lysosome to do, to create phagolysosome and then in this phagolysosome different types of uh, uh, you can say reactive oxygen species are generated uh, the enzyme involved here is nadph oxidase and it consumes consumes nadph to generate Uh, O2, uh, which is superoxide, and the superoxide is converted into H2O2, and this H2O2 can be converted into hypochlorite as well as uh, hydroxyl radical, and these are both bacteria that help to keep the bacteria. Moreover, there is also generation of uh, nitric acid by inducible nitric acid synthase, which also help to kill the bacteria. In addition to this, there are various granules uh, here are written. Uh, these granules release different type of enzymes which have different specific roles to kill the uh, bacteria. Uh, they can also damage the normal tissues, so there are uh, several protective mechanisms against them. Then there was in NADs, and then there was leukocyte mediated tissue injury. It was all about today's lecture, and the next lecture we will study about the mediators of inflammation. Thank you.